Hello, welcome to this practice session on atomic structure. We are going to talk about protons, neutrons, and electrons inside of atoms today. And we're going to jump straight into it. So protons are the positive subatomic particle and they are found in the nucleus. The thing about them is that the number of protons will tell you the identity of the atom. If you look at the periodic table, you'll see that from left to right and top to bottom, all of the elements are given a whole number to kind of count them, and that is called their atomic number. So hydrogen is number one, helium is number two, lithium is number three, and the way they came up with that was based on the number of protons. So any atom that has three protons will be an atom of lithium. Any atom with six protons will be carbon, 79 would be gold, 82 is lead, and that is how we determine what element we're looking at when we have an atom. Now, neutrons have no charge, they are neutral, and they are also found in the nucleus. So the thing about them is that they really don't serve much of a purpose, except that they prevent the protons from repelling each other. If you just put a bunch of protons together like this, um, all of these positives are going to try to repel each other because positives don't like to hang out with other positives. So the neutrons kind of sandwich in between these things to prevent them from just boop, popping open and repelling each other to the point where atoms can't exist. So the number of neutrons um, is not going to be specific. So carbon sometimes has six neutrons, sometimes it has seven neutrons, and sometimes it'll even have eight neutrons. The number of um, neutrons plus the number of protons is going to give us a number that is called the mass number. And that is going to help us out later when we're talking about isotopes. So um, if carbon, let's say, had six protons, it'll always well, it'll always have six protons. If it also has six neutrons, then it would be called carbon-12. If we had carbon with um, seven neutrons, then we would have carbon-13. And if we had carbon with eight neutrons, we'd have carbon-14. So that is the mass number, the 12, 13, and 14. It's really just telling us the number of things in the nucleus. Finally, we're looking at electrons, and electrons will have a negative charge, and they are found in quite a few places. They can be found in orbits, energy levels, clouds, or shells. It kind of depends on which model of the atom you're talking about and what that particular scientist called them or what your teacher may call them or what you may call them or what the book may call them. They're all interchangeable terms. Um, orbital is also on this list. Really what that means is that it's the rings outside of the nucleus. And the total number of electrons in atoms is going to be equal to the total number of protons. Atoms are electrically neutral. So if we had, uh, let's say, carbon, right, we would have six protons. In an atom of carbon, we would also have six electrons. And that's because the positives need to cancel out the negatives to give us an overall neutral charge for the atom. This is true, again, for atoms. There are times where your protons and neutrons are not going to be equal to each other, but that comes deeper into the chemistry curriculum, more so when we're talking about atoms bonding to form molecules, and molecules are the smallest part of compounds. So the total number of electrons is going to be equal to the total number of protons, but electrons is really what chemistry is all about. Um, when we have our electrons, they arrange into those rings and orbits, and there are only a certain number of electrons that can fit into each ring or orbit because they'll repel each other if there's too many in there. So what this means is that um, they have to be further organized, which we will get into in a future practice video. But for now, the electrons get organized into orbits, energy levels, orbitals, clouds, rings, shells, etc. The electrons that we really care about are called valence electrons. So if we were to look at carbon, and I'm just gonna like draw the top half of carbon, we would have those six protons. Carbon 12 is the most common form of carbon. So we'll give this six neutrons. 
And then if we draw these two rings of electrons, um, more on that in a second, carbon would have two electrons in this first ring and it would have four in the second ring. Again, this is just the top half of carbon. These loop around into circles. We assume that atoms are spherical because we have really not a lot of evidence to tell us otherwise. Um, our evidence points to a sphere. So the four electrons on the outside are called valence electrons, and they are the most special electrons. And that's because they are the ones that will participate in bonding. And uh, that's mostly what chemistry is about. Those interior electrons don't do much. It's those exterior valence electrons that are going to really run the show here. So that's what's special about electrons is that really only some of them matter. <laughs> I mean, they all matter, but only some of them are really important to the chemistry of that particular atom. Let's check out bromine on the periodic table. Bromine is right here. So this number right here is again, the atomic number. And for atoms that will be equal to the number of protons, and the number of electrons. So in bromine, we will have 35 protons and 35 electrons. Now to figure out the number of neutrons, what we will want to do is take this mass and round this to a whole number. If we take 79.9 .9 and round it to a whole number, we would have 80. So this number is called the average atomic mass. And I don't know if you know, but there are a lot of bromines out in the world. And what we have done to come up with this number is collect a lot of bromine. And then the chemist will put it into something called a mass spectrometer. Really what this does is it will separate the different bromines by mass. Remember, we can have a different number of neutrons. If we have more neutrons in bromine A than we have in bromine B, bromine A will be heavier and they will split in this mass spectrometer by mass. So what happens is uh, you'll have you know, the original mass, let's say we put 100 grams of bromine into this mass spectrometer, and 50 grams of it is has a mass of 80. And I don't know, 10% of it, 10 grams has a mass of 81, and then some of it has a mass of 79. They will do a weighted average of all of those samples to figure out what the average bromine's mass would be. And this has been tested over and over and over again. It's at this point kind of rare that the, the masses on the periodic table are going to change, but they do sometimes. So make sure that you're using a current periodic table. Um, so the average bromine will have a mass of 79.9, which means that most bromines are going to represent uh, the mass number 80. The majority of the bromines will have enough neutrons that their mass number will be 80. With a mass number of 80, that is equal to the protons plus the neutrons. So if I wanted to find just the neutrons, I should subtract the number of protons, which is 35. Bromine, in the case of having a mass number of 80, would have 45 neutrons. And what this means is that the average bromine has those 45 neutrons. Some of them will have more neutrons. Some of them will have less neutrons or fewer neutrons rather. Um, but the average bromine is going to have those 45 neutrons. And that's how you can figure out how many subatomic particles there are just using the square on the periodic table. Let's try another one. Up next, we have silicon, not the same as silicone. Uh, it is right here on the periodic table. And it has an atomic number of 14, meaning that it has 14 protons. And considering that this is an atom, it will have 14 electrons. Now, the number of neutrons, again, is going to be the mass, which is the average silicon atom. Uh, we're going to take that mass, round it to a whole number. And then we will subtract the number of protons. And in this case, we will have also 14 neutrons. Now, what's interesting here is that the periodic table was built very strategically. Um, 
I will get into more of this in the Bohr models lesson. So if you're interested in this, there'll be more over there. Silicon has these 14 electrons and they have to be organized into those orbits, shells, clouds, whatever. If we were to kind of sketch what a silicon would look like, the nucleus would be made of 14 protons, hence the plus, and then we would have 14 neutral neutrons. And silicon is in the third period of the periodic table. The periods are the ones that go across. And this means that silicon actually has three orbits of electrons. Silicon is going to have two electrons in that first energy level. It will have eight in the next energy level, and then it will have four in the final energy level, the valence shell. Um, I know it has four valence electrons because it's a member of group 14, and all members of group 14 have four valence electrons. We also can kind of use this periodic table to tell us how the... Um, electrons are organized. So if you look at the first period, we have hydrogen and helium. The first period corresponds with the first cloud or orbital of electrons. And because there's two elements in that period, we can fit two electrons in that first ring. I'm telling you, this periodic table is beautiful once you know how to read it. Period two corresponds to the, the second cloud. And if you were to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight elements in that second period, which means we can fit eight electrons in the second ring here. And then silicon is in the third period, so the third energy level, but then it is the one, two, three, four. It's the fourth element in that period, giving us four electrons in the valence shell. Now, if you added these together, two plus eight plus four, you would get those 14 electrons that silicon has. Last one is lithium. Lithium has an atomic number of three, which means it has three protons and it'll have three electrons. The mass of the average lithium is 6.94, meaning that the average lithium has a mass number of seven. It's got seven things in the nucleus, but three of them are protons meaning that four of them must be neutrons. Lithium, the average lithium that is, has three protons, three electrons, and four neutrons. All right, that is everything on atomic structure. Please make sure to leave any questions you have in the comment section below the video. Subscribe so you don't miss our next practice session, and I'll see you there. Bye.